Cage, Jason, and Matthias. Action. So and the first that, thing I have to ask what... you, because yes. I feel like I say your name incorrectly in every single episode I do with one of your movies. <laughs> well, for one, I can't blame you because it's German. So uh, people usually say Matthias and then they say use uh, because that's the American uh, uh, version of it. But it's Matthias Hus. Hus. Hus, yeah. Look who is talking. Okay. There was the, <laughs> I have I literally never it. once said your name right then. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. You know, how would you know? I mean, the, try to say the name of the director producer from John Wick. I don't even know his name, to be honest. So oh. Yeah, but that's another one. His name is, I can't say it. It's Chad Stolzewski, something really, you know, foreign. I, I think you just nailed it. I think that's it. Yeah, I, I mean, he might be Polish descent, so who who knows? I, I don't think anybody ever said his name right. There's a funny story just, real quick. Go ahead. Okay, good. Good. Um, oh, Sean is just, no, that's is Sean... While I'm talking to you, I get all these messages from people. Uh, it's like, I think Sean is trying, Sean is texting me right now. What the hell? Um, He's probably making sure I didn't forget. Or <laughs> something. He's such a go-getter, this one. Huh? Uh, I will he talk really about is. him. Yeah, he really is. We need to talk about it in a good way. Um, no, I was just saying, uh, very funny, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was always advice to change his name because people say, no way people are going to say your name. Oh, no, so it's here, whatever. He said, Dad, you just have to learn how to say it right, you know. And they did after a while, right? He, yeah, they, he became was iconic Arnold with that. Strong? They were, they were calling him Arnold Strong at the beginning or something like that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, probably figured you're going to have to call you something easy, you know, big yeah. Arnold. I feel uh, like it was in the Hercules in New York days. I think he was actually billed as Arnold yeah. Strong, which how that is better than Schwarzenegger is beyond me. I don't know. It's so obvious, right? Uh, but that's Hollywood for you, you know? People, yeah. um, I, I thought about it too for a while because, you know, you want to have this cool name. I mean, like Van Damme, by the way, is also not a real name, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Have you heard the story how that happened? No, I haven't. Neither have I. But I heard, no, but seriously, I heard there's a huge story behind it. And uh, you know the Viking samurai? Yeah. Yeah. He just talked to Michel Kissy and he told the story. But I, 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 I didn't quite listen to the whole podcast. So, But it's interesting because Jean-Claude Van Damme, it's not his real name. I did I know that, but I don't know what his name is, actually, now that you're saying that. I don't either. He's some Belgian name, uh, but it it sounded interesting the story. But uh, you should oh. you should listen to it. Um, but that's Hollywood, you know. You're trying to have that name where everybody, you know, boom. Yeah. There is so, so and so. It's I don't know. It's a, Hollywood makes no sense to me. I mean, you know more than I do. But yeah. the more stories yeah. I hear, I'm, so I'm reading your book, and uh, yeah. I haven't I haven't I haven't finished it yet because it is yeah. actually longer than Ben Hur. I mean, it is a long book. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. You know what? Originally, it was 700 pages. That's that's insane to me. How long did yeah, it take more, you to write that? Six months in Bali. And um, I moved to Bali for a little bit. Still lived there, kind of. And uh, I had nothing to do. And I wrote this book. And then my wife looked at it and she said, you can't, you can't publish this. This is, this is just too much, you know? And I deleted the entire book, like literally on the delete button, no backup, nothing. And I wrote it again a little shorter a, a couple of months later in LA. In the you deleted gym. a 700 page book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Because I trusted my wife. She said, it's too crazy. I was really telling it as it is, no holds barred. And um, there's still kind of what the movie, uh, the, the book is right now, but a, a little bit more uncensored. Yeah. And uh, I don't think I should have, I should do that. I, you know, maybe I would have edited the book instead of deleting it. Yeah. That's a lot uh, of work to delete. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I like writing. So for me, it, it came pretty easy, let me tell you. It, it you, just comes out of you. Else? Just, see what? Have you written something else? 
No, I write screenplays. I like, did not know this. Yeah, yeah, since a long time. And uh, I really love the business, Jason. I really do. It's. Uh, I started out as, as like, it's almost like um, on the lowest level, you know, as a hand double for Ken Wall in the take Beverly, Taken of Beverly Hills or something. It was a big, big movie, $30 million movie. And that was my first job. I doubled Ken Wall's hands. And uh, I was so excited. I called my mom. I said, I'm in the movies and I'm going to a studio now and this is it. And <laughs> it was just a hand double. But I took that seriously already, so seriously. I was so involved in making sure the magazine of the machine gun was loaded right and you could see my fingers and everything. Uh, already, and we were in a hangar and there was a helicopter, so they, they went all out, right? Just for my hands. And um, I thought, I love this business. This is this is for me. But I was so stupid, kind of, you know. I couldn't speak English. Uh, I was the illegal. I was just a kid, you know. I mean, literally not knowing what to do. You just do what you think you have to do to somehow, somehow I'm going to end up in the movies. I don't know how. And it's not all in the movies. There is so many ways and one ways and crazy things you do just to make it. Uh, and that's what it takes. It takes for you to start at the bottom all the way, right? And it takes you years and years and years to realize, oh, okay, that's a real craft and I have to know this. And it is not so easy as it looks like, you know, none of it is neither acting, fighting, producing, writing, and uh, putting it all together is very, very difficult. And it takes a lot of people to do it. And it can go terribly wrong. And that's where your show comes in. <laughs> uh, well. It's like uh, it, a <laughs> lot of it, 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 a lot of it is simply bad and funny. It, and you almost wonder how bad is it actually? A lot of times I'm asking myself, is this supposed to be funny or something? Is, I mean, I don't even know. It's like... Uh, there's a lot of great, great movies, and there is a lot of mediocre and a lot of movies you really wonder what the hell were you thinking. But each time I can tell you because I worked on I worked on them all, everybody always has the best intentions. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I would I hope mean, you're not going to work every day hoping oh, I'm gonna fuck this up. You know, right. make a Never piece happened. of shit here. <laughs> yeah, people always say, This is gonna be the masterpiece. You'll see people are gonna love this. This is the best film we've ever done. And then sometimes there's a wake up call and I can tell now after years and years of being on the set if this is gonna be bad or not. I can tell right away, more or less. And it's not that I have a choice, you know. Once you're in it, that's it. Sure. You know, you're you're captured. Uh, with that crew, with the capability of these people and what they can do. You're just trying to make the best out of it because you're an actor, but you're only as good as the people you work with. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Uh, but, it's you know, bizarre. What, what you're saying about some of the movies not turning out right, too, part of what I'm trying to do here is show people that even some of these movies where things went really sideways, there's a lot of enjoyment to be had in them. They're still fun and, and entertaining. You know what? I really you, your show is amazing. Uh, that concept. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> no, I mean I love it because you you're sitting. Okay, so you're sitting in your chair with this a movie chair, and you have obviously a screen, and you go scene by scene, and you're instinctively reacting to whatever you see. Right? You're having a good time. You're not alone. You're with your friends, colleagues. And uh, a dog and a beer and all you spill the beer and all this stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it's authentic <laughs> and yeah, it does happen, right? Uh, it's authentic and people like authentic, so it's not rehearsed. It's not mean spirited. It's like really how people uh, see it, like how I see it. I when I see it with my wife, I'm like, oh my god, this is, oh, I don't get it. You know, it's the same way. And sure. people love, people love well, it. You're actually highlighting it. I, that's 100 percent what we're what i'm trying to do but i gotta say one of the great uh benefits of it is i think i had seen i come in peace when i was a teenager but i'm not 100 percent sure so yeah i know how that goes yeah i, I you know re-watching it I, I really wasn't remembering a lot of it but it introduced me to your movies and in turn oh, now you. i've watched several of your movies and so hundreds of thousands of people now have seen 
clips of talons yeah. of the eagle which you know we didn't yeah, know, I know, I know, I know. that's crazy and, huh? and i i gotta tell you man, i love those movies like they're ridiculous <laughs> but they're so much fun they were fun to make too jason they are fun because uh you have really back then i have to say it there's a back then there's the now and there's the future i don't know right back then um there weren't there was money being spent on these movies. They were in the millions, right? Sure. Now they're below million. That type of film is below million, I tell you right now. Uh, now they, before they were in the millions, and they had time, and you have these people like Billy Blanks, who I love so dearly. Uh, they are so engaged in this. They are highly professional trained athletes. Um, none of us is a trained actor, but you kind of get the hang of it after a while, right? So it's just fully commitment to do something. Every single person there, you know, does the best they can do. And it's quite dangerous at times and brutal and cold and miserable. And <laughs> I mean, Jalal and Mary, the films we've done together, is like bizarre. At times, you know, the circumstances you find yourself in because it's in Canada, it's minus 20 degrees, no shirt on, they spray you, you know, all that crap. Uh, it, it's it's a lot. It's tough, but it's fun and it's dangerous because it's not a studio movie. It's like a lower budget movie comparing to the big, big boys. And you really do things that are uh, not safe a lot of times, you know. Well, you know, uh, what? I think all that shows up in the movies, though, because... When, yeah. when you see somebody eat shit, a stuntman with a hard landing, like it's real. It's not like a lot of the movies yeah. now where with CG and, you know, I hate to say right. it, like yeah. a lot of the safety precautions, uh, it doesn't look as intense. So in a lot yeah. of these smaller movies, when things like that happen, or when you're in Canada with your shirt off getting sprayed down to look like you're sweating, that misery shows up on film and it looks intense and I dig it. You know, you watch TC2000, right? Oh, yes. I love that movie. Yeah. Uh, with Bobby Phillips. That was amazing. Um, I've never met anybody like Bobby Phillips. She was so... Uh, she's pretty still, obviously. But she was so pretty, right? And uh, she was cast for purpose. She's the female lead. And it was so freaking cold. And every single crew member was like trying to win her over <laughs> you know she had like 300 people giving her jackets and she was always in the warmth and huddled up and catered to you know and then i'm uh, on a 100 foot catwalk outside you know bolo young just killed me with that door and i fall sprayed wet on the floor but like but metal ross you know those metal things you run over those catwalks and then she runs, everyone runs, and they, they're supposed to step on me. And I'm like, ah, oh, well, you know, fuck it, it's a movie. And then she comes with her high heels and bam! I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. But I love it. Why do I love it so much? You know? <laughs> and uh, you know. we were working in a shit factory. They burned shit there. So there was shit flying everywhere, dry shit. It smells so bad. Uh, but you love it. You like a why the fuck? Oh, sorry. Why do I? Yeah, and the fucking they're burning shit. They actually burn it. Why are they burning shit? I don't know. Ever you never think about it. <laughs> what happens to the shit of the world, right? They're burning. Okay, it. That, this is in such you? a great description of why I love these movies. You are in a shit factory, getting stepped yeah. on by Bobby Phillips in high heels. Yeah, that That's that was brilliant. very romantic, literally. <laughs> And we ended up dating afterwards. So I was going to say, there was one line in your book where you said you were dating her, and then you just were talking about something else. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. He dated Bobby Phillips? What? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we fell for each other, as it is in films, you know, uh, and uh, moved together in L.A., and we're, we're very serious, yeah. Wow. Was this from TC2000 or a different Boom, TC2000. One of my best memories. That's always my best memories. So... My best memories of that was Bobby Phillips, who everybody was like, oh, Bobby, Bobby. I thought, oh, you know, oh, go in line, you know. <laughs> and uh, anyway, long story short, but we ended up together. And uh, that was so romantic. It was snowing and all that, you know. It was like, oh, I get paid to be with Bobby Phillips in a movie. I don't care if she steps on my back. I love it. I must be sick. But it's fantastic, you know. So, yeah, it was a payoff there's always a payoff that's how dense the stories are in your book there's one line of bobby phillips and then it's on to the next crazy ass story and it's ah. like 
<laughs> yeah, well, not, not 700 pages anymore. Before there was Bobby Phillips' story, there was that story and that story, and that's just too much, you know. Because everyone has a story that is outrageous. Uh, it, it, the people that I met in Hollywood, especially the women that came into my life, their story is unbelievable. Uh, it's not up to me to tell the story, but I, if I would, it would be crazy. They should write their own book. I, there, there are so many stories in there I want to ask you about. I'm trying to... I'm yes. trying to wait a little bit because I, some of the shit you went through is really wild. Uh, but That's before really I forget, crazy. you have the picture of Bolo behind you, I think from TC2000. Yes. That's the door. Actually, that moment, he he did the chi move or whatever that was. The yeah, tiger he killed thing. you with energy through a door yeah. or something. He really did, yeah. <laughs> Great movie. Uh, yeah. How much Bolo Young, young by the way, you know? I'm sorry, go ahead. And it's Bolo Young, who, if I may tell you real quick, doesn't say anything. He he's so quiet. He's like a myth, like a legend, like uh, like you think. Oh, okay, there's this Bruce Lee guy. He doesn't say anything. I hope he's not going to kill me today. You know, uh, and he didn't. So that was good. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Did could he speak English? I don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> okay. That's Nobody funny. knows. Yeah, he is like that. He's, he, he, if you want to keep a certain myth around you, just don't say nothing. Okay. I mean, that's that's a good advice. Yeah. Was, I mean, he's shining on top of it. So we, we were all curious while watching that movie. How much taller than him were you? A lot. Yeah. Because they, like, they tried to shoot it in a way that it looked like you guys were you know, both these giants. And I'm like, ah, he doesn't look very tall. No, he's like 5'10", which is tall, but in in a sense, it's not small. But I'm 6'5". Yeah, there was a difference. Yeah, I mean, it worked out. He's massive, yeah. so it looked yeah. great. You want to hear something funny? Of course. Okay. Uh, how you misjudge people's heights, right? So I was just uh, uh, brawling with uh, Chuck Liddell. You know who Chuck Liddell is? Oh, the yes. MMA fighter? Maybe my favorite yeah? fighter of all time, yeah. Oh, that's like literally this kind of guy, right? And um, so I'm so used to, you know, I'm big and this is me, who else? And then he walks in on the set just last week and I'm like, damn, is he tall and big. He was so, he was like, uh, like only this much shorter. Like a really an impressive, you would think Chuck Liddell is not that big because he's not a heavyweight fighter or anything. That guy came in 255 or 257 pounds. I'm 230. Jeez. And I thought, oh my God, this is a fucking monster. You know, this guy's going to fucking kill me. And uh, he's so stoic, you know, it's like, like in the movies, like in the page, you know. And uh, so we start fighting, and then uh, it, already in the rehearsal, I'm like clipping him. And I thought, oh my God, I just clip him. That only has one or two outcomes. He's either going to kill me or he's going to stop working with me, you know, one of those things. And he was like, I said, I'm so sorry, Chuck. I, I, I can't believe this. He's like, what, what are you talking about? It's like, oh my God, you know, the guy is not even flinching. Any other actor would be like, I don't want to do this anymore, you know. So that's about sometimes how you can misjudge people. Okay. That's of all the people I think I would not want to clip with a punch, it would probably be the Iceman. Oh, uh, and he caught me too, just like a slight, a slight uh, uh, overhang. And I thought, oh, fuck, this is going to go sideways because we are, we don't have much time. There's one fight scene and we haven't studied enough the moves, you know, and it's really wild. <laughs> uh, the punches they're going. And I thought, oh, man, if he hits me, I'm, I'm finished. This is it. Uh, but he never did. Do you ever sit back and just think how crazy? moments of your life are where you're having a, a fight scene with Chuck Liddell on a yeah. set or at this point, are yeah. you so used to no, this? No, thing? never. It's just that it's a privilege to be honest that I'm aware of, you know, I mean, you, you get to do things that are insane and I'm not even uh, on the a, a level, you know what I mean? Like the Tom Cruise level or those type of people, they get to fly jets and all that shit, you know, but we get to see and do a lot of things that are not normal. I mean, Chuck Liddell, normally I'd be just a fan sitting at the ringside. Right. You know, like, what's the other guy? 
It's it's more like this. It's uh so if you're in the movies and you're a bad guy for thirty years and you, you kill people, uh there's a couple things that you notice is that you have access to other celebrities and they actually talk to you or they come up to you. Where as an equalish type of thing, uh or gangsters, real gangsters, like we're talking about people that are hardcore gang members, they don't kill you because they think you're one of them. So you have a, villains. Yes. So you have a little bit. Yeah, seriously. So you have. A, I have stories that I also could not all write in the book. They're like bizarre because I'm not one of them, but you are being treated like one. You know. So huh. that that's that's the advantage of being in the movies. It's I crazy. would not have expected that. Yeah. Yeah. That's... It's, a, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of hardship, but it's more fun than hardship. I say, you know. Any, I think anyone who's working, I hate to say it, it sounds so douchey, in the arts, you know, writing, mm-hmm. or acting, or yeah. musician, yeah. the uh, ups and downs are uh, wild. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Jason, you have a YouTube channel, so and, and you're very successful with it, and it didn't start, it started with zero, right? Oh, of course. Yeah, it took years yeah. before I even had a thousand subscribers. Yeah, and, and that is so frustrating, and no one sees that. They just see you having now all these subscribers and all these fans and stuff. Uh, the road is, I mean, you have to walk that stony road and you want to give up or you get nicked a little bit. Uh, that's being an entertainer, and YouTube be as much as an entertainer as I'm an entertainer because there's a certain amount of discipline attached to it. You have to constantly push and be at it. You can, so like in my case, I can never lose my muscle. I can never not be fit or get out of shape or cut my hair too short or whatever the hell. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. keep that mystical figure alive. And it's the same with you. You can never, oh, you know what? I'd rather go three weeks to Cabo, fuck my clients, you know, yeah. fuck the, I mean, sorry, you know, who cares? Let's not watch any, I'm so sick of it. Who knows? You can't do it. If I mean, you can. To a degree, but not too long. Well, yeah, I mean, it's any. So I've been, I've actually been a, a full time writer for about ten years. That's why, probably, why I oh, keep asking you about your book. Uh, oh, okay. But you're you, right. Um, you, you're so right in that the what? How'd you put it? The stony road, the long and stony road. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the attrition is what allows uh, the people who are. I don't. I don't want to say the best because it's not always the case. But the people no, who are it's willing not always to put the, best. In the yeah. work. Yeah. Um, that's what allows them to make it because everybody else will fall off eventually. They get sick of the right. grind. They get sick of a lack of a reward, not being noticed. And eventually they just quit and go work at a bar. And there's nothing yeah, wrong with that, but you know, no, that's, no. You know, that's what allows Jason, people like you to have a 30 year career kicking people's asses in movies. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, it's, it's I, I mean, if you ask me, should I go to Hollywood? Anybody, I said, don't do it. It's insane. The odds of making it is literally zero. You have to have a lucky star. Uh, when I got there, it was still possible. Ish. Yeah. Uh, because there were not that many people and there was just um, uh, one outlet. That's the movie theater. And then we had VHS, right? And we had uh, maybe HBO. You know, that's it. Three outlets for all of us. A small number of us. So you had an actual chance to go audition, be someone, be seen. Uh, you only thing that you have to bring in is you got to be different one way or the other, or really good at acting. You know, uh, uh, you have to have a spill like Van Damme had the splits or yeah. uh, Rocky had the idea of an underdog and yet you know, you, you went from, you mean, we all know the Rocky story. So there was a possibility, Arnold, even everybody could come in with some skill set. And people say, you know, yep, a bodybuilder playing Conan, that's a good idea. Today, I don't care how you look like, you're not going to be Conan. People are exhausted of all the Conans and Conan lookalikes and Instagram and all that. It's too many good looking people. Everything, everybody can have 560 roundhouse kick whatever right anybody can do it except me but <laughs> you know what i mean uh, by now it, we are over exaggerated the market so good luck getting noticed i mean do you think the path now is maybe through other means such as being a 
social media. Yeah, I would. Star if or something I, like that. If I would be starting up now, I would start with more social media. Again, sure. you have to have some sort of a skill set or an idea nobody else has. Like your idea, for instance, is something you had. So I don't know any other shows like this, you know. And whoever copies it would just copy it. So you have to have something. It's something yeah, I, that people want to see. I, I, I do wonder. I, I hadn't really thought of it. But to your point, I think having an original idea and then maybe that could catapult you into... Well, I mean, oh. I'm just a fat idiot who watch, watches movies on my couch, and now I'm going to be... But there's a niche. But there's a niche. A movie, maybe. Well, to your point, I'm going to be on a movie set with you in Germany in six weeks. I know. So, so that's very interesting, for instance. Uh, and I think this is really clever. Uh, your show, it's about creating a community that has like-minded tastes or interests in films, uh, especially... You know, let's call it B-movies or action movies. So, you know, I mean, you're looking at all of them, to be fair. Uh, and that is definitely a community. So now you're bringing the community even closer to, to the reality of it. You're talking to actors, the producers. You're going to be on the set. You're part of this last committee. Uh, you can do interviews. You can film. You or giving the opportunity to the people that really want to know to go behind the scenes uh, because it's interesting. You'll see how interesting and difficult it is to pull off a movie. It is bizarre. You're going to see the amount of hours, the sweat, tears, and the chaos that is involved in that. Oh, my God. Because you only have uh, 21 days, four weeks maybe, yep. to get everybody together in a common interest. It's not Mission of Impossible of two-year shooting. This is four weeks. That's much harder than Mission Impossible. I'm telling you later why. So, But that's the community you create right now. You're not in the Mission Impossible community. You are in that community, which is, I think, way more interesting. That has way more fans because they know this is real this is not special effects this is not hundreds and millions of dollars this is really uh like me an independent youtuber entertaining people is independent movies is the same thing it's not a studio movie or you'll be tucker calls you know what i mean with fox so that that's the difference and these are grassroots movements and grassroots fans and all that so highly interesting no, I, I totally agree. I, I think, I, I honestly, I think Hollywood has probably screwed itself up with all these Marvel movies and everything superheroes mm. now, and it all looks like uh, such fake crap. I um, hate it. I I want to tell you one thing, so Jason. Um, I don't know. I always think about this. I, I'm really a movie fanatic like you are, right? And I'm in it as an actor. And I'm so frustrated because I'd like to do good movies. No. Uh, I mean, I'd like to, but there's not many opportunities for it. There is like only. Good. Do you mean big budget? What do you, how do, what do you mean? Uh, no, like I don't need even that much money. Uh, we need more time, mm. professional people. So, okay, so Dark Angel, I come in peace, yeah? So that was my uh, best film, I say. So the reason being is because we had a team that was. At that time, the best team in Hollywood money could buy. I mean, I'm talking about 100 million. We're talking about 10 million, right? Uh, ish. So there were professional stunt people that worked for 30 years or Dukes of Hazard. I mean, the best of the best. Uh, explosion guys. All that was on a, such a high level. And you shoot three months and you are in a family of highly professional people taking you to a level that is the best you and they can be and the best for the audience. It's a professional job. I mean, these explosions are so for real. It, it's like when you are in, in that situation, you're literally scared you're not going to survive it, right? Uh, and the stunts are real. Every single stunt I've done and other people on this movie, it's like this might be my last day on, on the set, you know, and that's... That, that was real movie making. And that's the kind of movie I would like to do. So if I get hired for a movie now, 
it's always the same mo oh i'm such a fan i love dark angels and then i end up on some uh, low budget movie not doing anything because there's nobody there that knows how to do this the right way. Or, oh, uh, yeah, uh, like the fight with Chuck Liddell. I'm not putting the movie down. It's not a fighting movie. It's a sci-fi action movie. And he's a bounty hunter and he's supposed to, you know, catch me. And then the fight scene that we have is short and sweet. And for me, that will be just the first third of it. Basically, uh, 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 I was actually saying, well, we have to do, you know, now this and that and this and that. Oh, no, 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 we don't have time. You know, we got to move on. We have so much more to film and this and that. So you're doing only the one third of the workload, not because the director is bad, the movie is bad or this and that. It's just different now. There's, nobody has time unless it's Mission Impossible. Right. And then it's overly, there's almost too much time. Do you see a, a shift happening at some point? Because I have noticed that the, the Marvel movies aren't doing as well as they used to. It feels like no, they're not. And people they're are getting burned out with that a bit. Yeah. Do you see more modestly budgeted movies coming back? Or do you think we're yeah, just yeah. stuck in... No, I don't think so. I think the audience doesn't like it. They love Top Gun. I mean, that's a big movie, right? But I oh, think that it's... A, that was a legit good movie, though. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was really it, good. Yeah, and me too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got to say, you can do this... Uh, in that budget range, but you can also do a solid movie with a solid story for a few million, you know? Uh, like, you can. You just have to have a good script and good actors and a, a professional people. You can't shoot a movie in three weeks, sorry. You can. Bloodsport, all of that was shot in three weeks. Yeah? Uh, it's doable. Maybe it was shot a little longer, but uh, it was more money uh, yeah more time i mean i don't know we have to change it we have to change it uh it's a everything is a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy right so i believe for instance last committee it's not a copy of a copy of a copy it's people trying to do the best they can do i know the people involved are very professional so there is a chance just like bloodsport had a chance because they didn't know they have blood sport. Actually, that movie was on the shelf. And Menachem Golan uh, said, that's a piece of shit. I can't sell it. Fuck. I mean, I don't want to have anything to do with it. And if it wouldn't have been for Van Damme and the director, um, Sheldon Lettish, to re-edit it, it would have never made it. They made it good because they knew the love and the intention this movie originally had, you know. So they saved the movie. It wasn't a big budget movie at all. No, yeah. Uh, to your point, I, I totally agree that it can be mm. done, but I feel yeah. like making something really good that quickly in that low budget is exceedingly difficult. And with what you said about the last Kumite, I think Sean has done a really good job putting together Amazing. a group of people who know what they're doing. Um, I don't know how he did it. I don't typically know. Typically, someone admire. like him who's like, I want to make a movie, he ends up, he would end up directing it, and then it would just be a pile of shit because he doesn't know how to direct. But he recognized I don't know. that. He's a, he, for me, he's a good producer. He really is. Absolutely. Uh, he, I mean, he. I was thinking he's joking in a way, because, I mean, I, I uh, at first I talked him into it, and then I tried to talk him out of it. And uh, once he... Oh, he didn't he, tell me that part. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, not, not like talk him out of it. I, mean, I was kind of like putting up the stakes higher and higher, and he's like, okay, whatever, I'll, I'll take care of it, I'll find it, I'll do this. And I'm like, oh, he's really doing it. I mean, with the script and all, he wrote down the storyline, and I'm like, oh, he's really... I mean, a lot of people just say they do things, he actually ended up doing it. Then the next thing, he, he gives me the script, and I'm like, this is a real script. And then, you know, uh, how about this, how about that? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe... Because I know how difficult it is, you know, I... Uh, so he doesn't. He didn't know at the beginning how difficult it is. He just like, oh, it's doable. It's I'm going to do it. And people like me, they've done it a thousand times and not succeeded, right? Sure. Uh, uh, not a thousand times, but a few times. And we were like, oh my god, this is. I'm never going to do this again. This is insane. I stay an actor, right? So uh, no, he has what it takes. He is so diligent and uh, like a pit bull, and he's not giving up. And and we had so many conversations and how come this guy's not calling back and that one isn't and that and i don't understand it what's wrong with the people in hollywood you know 
<laughs> uh, and I said, well, that's Hollywood. You know, you have to live and learn. That That's just how these people are. And uh, some are good, some are, they're all good, but not everyone is right away going to, you know, jump on board. People come and go. It was really interesting. And he ended up getting an amazing team. It really did. I, I want to go back yeah. to you talking him into it. How does that happen? So you're talking to a YouTuber and you're like, hey, you should make a movie? Yeah, I mean, I always think that I many times I thought I will approach a YouTuber to do something because of the community that you have behind you. And a YouTuber, it's like part of a community that we are all in. So why not pull our resources together and do it together? Because we are like-minded film fanatics. And there is a, YouTubers in your bro, in your area have a certain knowledge by just watching this all the time. Do you know what I mean? You watch yeah, a thousand sure. movies, you get a you get an idea what's good and not. Yeah, you don't know so, how to make a good movie, but you know what is good. That's how I always describe writing for people: is if you read enough mm -hmm. books, you know what a good book is. But when you try to make one yourself, you have to figure out how to get. Like you know what's good, you just have to figure out how to get there. And it takes right. time. It, it takes time, but you can do it. I mean, you see it was shown. It's the same with writing screenplays, right? So I started writing screenplays in 2000-ish. Uh, and uh, so what did I do? I read Jane Black, all these famous authors back then who did major movies, you know. That's my favorite and, screenwriter. Yeah, mine too. So I, I tried to copy him, get his style down, then I, a couple other people. So... What I did, I was literally copy pasting his di not his dialogue, like a stage direction, M not the dialogue, mostly the stage direction, and then I filled in. I bought a very nice program, Final Cut Pro, no, uh, 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 the writing program, Final. Oh, oh Final Draft. Sorry, about. Final Draft. Final Draft. So I bought that, and then I. Copy paste his scene direction because he had so many nice words. But I put my own story in, and I did this for like a year or so till I didn't need him anymore. Till I had kind of like his writing style down, because there's a certain style. And then you go from there. And then I live in Brentwood, or I used to, and I work out in a small gym where every celebrity in the world works out. There's a private gym, right? I mean, you name a producer or actor, a lister. I see him every morning. And uh, so I have access to every everybody in Hollywood, right? Because we know each other. So I'll give one of the major producers my script. And then, you know, they, they come back and they say, well, you know, <laughs> uh, it's obvious you're German. You should get a writing partner, you know. Or I give another producer, I, I send him my script and he writes me back in the subject line. What makes you think I would want to read this or something you know uh wow. i mean you get you you get beaten down and you learn and you come back and then you give them another script and uh people just shake their heads and uh, and uh then it's, it's, one of my scripts actually got stolen by a major producer and produced uh and then i knew i was kind of on my right track it was a big big movie Can and you it was the name of it yeah um with Diane Lane, what was it? Uh, huh, I forgot the name. Uh, what was that movie with where where he killed all these people online and then he he, he caught her as well? Hmm, with Diane Lane, is it from the like the early two thousands, mid two thousands? No, mid two thousands. Uh, anyway. Hmm. It's, it's kind of like stupid to talk about it because these people were are really real people and I submitted my script including the name Diane Lane as the lead you know and they uh, said no we're not interested at the moment and boom that movie had a one-of-a-kind premises you know so you can't you lift all the whole thing uh, rewrote a little bit but I was too young and inexperienced but for me that was like oh that's a good sign in a way you know I'm on my way now. They, uh, I guess I have kind of what it takes, but it's a long road before then you get scripts optioned, you know, um, and then nothing happens. But anyway, you can learn it. Yeah, it's a, it's a learning process. So 
Have you had where we scripts started. produced? Yeah, I have them often. Uh, one, for instance, was bought and almost produced, and then the financing fell through. It's a bigger movie, you know, and now I have it back. You know, it's a thriller. It's kind of like the movie Unknown. It's okay. a CIA, CIA story. It's a real... I, eventually, I'm going to get these things done. Now I have a couple others in the pipeline that I'm getting ready to produce, uh, or hopefully, because I have distribution companies interested in it. You know? Last year, I had one. I almost had the financing, but it fell through in the last month. I mean, it was like, oh! Sure. There's a lot of interest. So, And I'm telling you, I'm doing this for 15 years, so you know, and I have the context. You can see how difficult it is. Yeah, it's that's why I'm always so impressed with Sean. But it, it's funny that uh, I, so I was reading your book last night, and I'm like, this is his second language. How, why is he so good at writing this? I'm like, now that you're saying you've been writing for so long, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I thought this was the only thing you'd written, and I was like, how the hell is he so good at writing? Oh, thanks. Oh well, I mean, I've been in in the states for 37 years. So. Sure, but, but no... I mean, typically, when you people who have English is their first language, and they try to write a book. It's a pile of mm -hmm. shit. My first three books were the worst things you'd ever read. But so that's why I was reading this. Like, damn, this is really good. Oh, thanks. Well, I mean, I, I didn't think about it. I just wrote, you know, what's on my mind. I'm Have trying you thought to... about turning it into an audio book? Yeah, people said I should do it. Uh, currently, I, I shortened the book a little bit. It has now a real release in America with the publisher and i have it out in spain now all over the spanish countries oh, nice. so uh in germany soon so i was busy with that you know getting yeah, it published I... in different languages to be honest yeah yeah i i mean that's a that's a huge win right there getting it translated that's uh that's difficult to do oh, that's uh, i mean the spanish people they translated 500 some pages i'm like oh my god but yeah. to the word and their book is way better than this one it uh, is so high classy and wow the way they did it is just unbelievable hmm. okay yeah i'll, I'll yeah. have to talk to you more about it because i was just reading this and thinking you being doing an audiobook version of this would be great uh, people okay, spend yeah. so much money for voice actors you're already really? an actor who could read your own story. Yeah, for me, it's uh, yeah. I pay like four hundred dollars per finished hour. So a book like my newest book would probably cost me five thousand dollars to have turned oh, into wow. an audio book. But yeah, you, 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 you're, you're such a versatile speaker; you can do it yourself. I am the worst actor of all time. Really? <laughs> yes. If you held but a gun to my head and told me I had to convincingly say one line, I would be dead. I'm the worst. Uh, what yeah. do you write? Thrillers or horror and thriller novels? Yeah. Oh, I love it. So you you publish them through Amazon? Yeah, I self publish all my stuff. Yeah. Hey, uh, like me, at this point, right? That's how I started. Um, is, is it is it good for you? Is it profitable? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I did it full time for ten years. Um, it's only oh, since it's... YouTube has taken off that I've I've backed wow. off a little bit while I built wow. the YouTube channel. Yeah. So interesting. It's so interesting. See, I, I uh, read these books, type of books that you write, and I have a friend that writes those, and I could never write it. Well, you know, I could never write nonfiction, so we're, uh, we're yeah, even it's on kind of weird. I think it has to be something that you are called upon for or something. You know what I mean? Uh, for sure. It's a craft to write a novel. It's so intricate. It is like a thriller, a horror movie story or whatever. You know, not a script. Script's easy. A book is just well, like uh, you have to have a lot of patience with words. <laughs> for sure, you know? honestly, I found um, screenwriting to be more difficult for me. I think because of the brevity of it, um, huh. having See, to get I mean, so so trying to get so much of the story across with just dialogue is difficult. You know, like I, I can set a scene with paragraphs wow. of description, and but when yeah. you're writing a screenplay, you're trying to get ideas across just with dialogue and a little bit of description. It's a whole different it's a it, 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 See, but that's how a brain is. I, I could never spend that much time on the description. You know what I'm sure. saying? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, so that makes our every brain it works different. Oh, for sure. That's why. Yeah. That's why yeah. uh, I usually, um, what I, like when I sit down to write a book. I mean, it's just hours and hours and hours of just. Wow. I'd like to read one. If you can give me, uh, send me a link on WhatsApp for Amazon. Sure. Absolutely. 
Oh, that would be great. I love reading. I uh, I've been reading books since I can read. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, I love it. Uh, it's just, and I love it if it's someone I know, because like the last horror movie book, a thriller. I'm looking at it. It's up there. A friend of mine wrote. It was wow, so good. It was about Hollywood, you know. Oh. And uh, he wrote. Uh, it's just so crazy. I told him so many stories unknowingly about Hollywood, and then he went there on vacation and he wrote this book, which is a horror movie. Uh, he added all these real elements of Hollywood into this horror movie, uh, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is crazy! This this could be real." <laughs> you know, it's like it was so scary. Because Hollywood has some elements that are really scary, you know, and he he tapped right into this, and um, it's a story about a young actor going to Hollywood to make it right, and as it is, he's very poor. He doesn't have any money. He's struggling. He's dating girls, but he can't really afford it. He finally falls in love with a waitress. Uh, that only hamburger joint where he only goes to, and he loves that particular hamburger. And then she says, oh, uh, if you're evicted, you're sleeping on a couch like it is for those young actors. There's this catering business. Maybe I used to work for them. You should uh, uh, work for them. Maybe you can. They have all kinds of famous people ordering these expensive hamburgers, right? And you could be the delivery guy driving these hamburgers to these movie stars. See, so make some connections. So he does. And he wonders why in the car is a, it's a nice big uh, van and it's a very good catering company, but there's always a small box only and it's tens and thousands of dollars the bill. And he does get to go to all these movie stars and he gets to know some of them. And one of them is kind of like me. So that's why the guy, you know, the older guy that's still trying to be an action hero and he lives in Beverly Hills and he always orders this hamburger and he takes a liking to this boy. And uh, in the end, it turns out that he really gets involved. He sleeps around with the movie stars suddenly because he's everyone's favorite delivery boy. And they invite him to eat a hamburger. And it's the best hamburger you have, eh? It's just this incredible taste. Long story short, it turns out these are people they kill, uh, homeless people that they kill, and they make the meat, and, and the rich people eat it, the hamburgers, right? So then... Once he's introduced to eating the hamburger and he knows it's the dead people, he's also part of this. And then he has to, and they make him a movie star. And then he has to live with that secret as all the other movie stars, you know, and he, he doesn't know if he can live with it because he's eating humans, you know, but he's now a movie star, but it, all, all hell breaks loose in the end. You know, it's kind of a cool premise in the way that uh, the way he wrote it, like, you know, like you write things most likely so intricately described so vivid you know like you're like oh my god i see this as a movie as we talk right what's the author's name marco Theis, but he's german oh is the book in german it's not in english yeah unfortunately oh. it's in german. okay i was gonna I'm say sorry. i'm gonna buy it right now because you sold me on it <laughs> yeah it's it's really a good story and uh people love it and he reminds me of you he He's such a good story storyteller, and he loves it. He's been doing it for ten years, you know. Good for him. Um, yeah. Do you, so, do you do a lot of mm -hmm. horror movies? Do you like horror movies? I don't know. I shot a couple that are, never came out, and they were terrifying to shoot. I mean, it's like this is so. Uh, you know, it's so real when you shoot it, and How sometimes when out? kids, uh, one. I think there was a problem with SAG. They didn't. The producer was a thief, and then he he scammed SAG, the union, didn't pay some actors, and then they keep the film. They can never release it. Uh, it was a good movie. It was done by Germans. It was so brutal. Wow. How, how frustrating is that to work on something and then it's never seen? I would have loved to have seen it. Yeah. Is there any uh, consolation in, like, you got paid for it, or is it just so frustrating because no one Well, it's low budget, it. so I didn't get paid much. I did it as a favor to the Germans that wanted oh. to make it in Hollywood. Another one I did, it was so scary, too. 
and so well done and the special effects and the horror elements and the guts and glory you know with Olaf Ittenbach doing the special effects all three of us uh, also didn't make it and then um, yeah they ran out of money but you work 90% of it and then something happens you know people start fighting uh, they pull out take the rights with them or something it's sad these things happen unfortunately most of them are horror movies yeah, I, I love horror movies just because I feel like a lot of chances are taken with them because their budgets are yeah. low and they're usually yeah. unknown actors. But I know. because of that, they can be really people, good. Yeah, you, be know, really good. you get a lot of people making movies who probably shouldn't be making movies, but then you get some gems that do come out of it. Listen, uh, I just was approached to do a horror movie here in Germany and I wrote the script. And this is really crazy. Uh, it, it was a really suspense story, right? And yes, there were uh, some sexual elements in it, uh, exploitative animal, uh, exploitative moments I had to put in. Nothing graphic, just a little bit, you know. And uh, the actresses refused to play it. So we never started filming. Huh. Yeah, they didn't want to be sexualized. And I said, well, that's part of a horror movie, you know. It's uh, sexualization. Uh, I mean, we're not talking about porn here. We're talking about small stuff, you know. Sure. Uh, but these young girls, especially in Germany, they're all feminists and this and that, and they didn't want to do it. And I'm like, okay, well, then you can't sell the movie. <laughs> you have so, to yeah. have some sort of a... Shot. Yeah, it, I mean, you know what I mean. It's a, it's a bit exploitative, uh, slightly, but you have to follow the rules of horror movies. You know, I mean, there's a scare factor. Look at Hostel and all this. It starts out with pretty girls and all that stuff, you know. Um, just a slight thing, you know. Uh, anyway, you never know. Mostly people that never done anything, they're the hardest to work with. I believe it. I believe it. That makes sense. Yeah, or have done a little bit, and they think they know Hollywood. So I, I learned in Germany, I, I don't even want to do anything. You know, hearing you talk about this, it's, and from reading your book, do you say yes to just almost everything? Because it sounds like so many of your adventures started with someone asked you to do something crazy, and you're like, yeah, sure, I'll go do some crazy gambling nonsense in Las Vegas. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, because not anymore. But I used to. Not anymore. I find it, I, I find that very interesting, and I, th I yeah. I'm wondering I mean, if that's a huge I mean, part of your success. Is yeah, because when you're young, no matter what, I'll do it. This is how I started. They said, uh, "Are you um, a martial artist that can do all the stunts?" And I said, "Yeah." I didn't know if I can. I just say yes. Or can you ride a horse? And I'm like, "Yeah." I never rode a horse. I'll just do it. I don't care. Conan, the, the TV show, um, can you ride a horse? I'm like, sure, I can ride a horse. First scene, I had to gallop on the horse, jump off the horse while I'm riding, you know, sword fight with Ralph Miller. And I'm like, I just did it. <laughs> you know, I, I, it, did, I, it didn't occur to me. You lie. You always say, of course, I know how to do it. Do you, do you attribute that to some of your success is just yeah, saying yes just when other it. people say no? Yes, just say yes. Yeah, I just said yes to something really crazy, and I got burned again. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, it was also very interesting. I went to Uzbekistan to do a TV series, and it started out really good, and then <laughs> they didn't pay me. Second half, and I was like, oh my god, I just spent all this time murdering myself down there. But uh, but it was interesting, you know, um, interesting experience to shoot a TV series for. Uzbekistan people, for instance. That's, that's you know. wild. <laughs> you in Thailand, I, on top I, of it. And in Uzbekistan. And it's a fight movie. And <laughs> it's just crazy. But, you know, it was another experience. For uh, sure. One, yeah, now I know how people do TV series, TV series in Uzbekistan. It was so wild. It's like um, since I've never seen anything like it. It's completely different than in America. So you had to adjust to how they shoot the movies. They talk while you are while you are acting. They're talking you through the scenes with the dialogue and everything and the stage direction. And I'm like, where's the microphone? They said, we have no microphone. We do it all later in the studio. That's how they used to do movies in Italy. 
uh, the spaghetti westerns they just ad lib and then later they and that's exactly how they do it right and uh, it was so interesting for me but when you see it later they have the most expensive cameras the lighting all that stuff it looks like a hollywood production for some reason you know was it difficult for you to act while people were just talking to you while you're trying to no, I loved it. I thought, this is great. This is something totally new. I'm going to dive into this. This is insane. And I enjoyed every minute. That's why. Yeah. Uh, I, it, because the adventures you have, it's a Muslim country. It's different. Uh, they treat you like a god. You're in the finest hotels, limos, and everything you want. Uh, why not have an uh, adventure? I have... You know? uh... One note I read, and it's, I swear, people, this is the last time I'll bring up uh, your book. I'm mm -hmm. sure everyone's like, you have Matthias on, and you're talking about his book instead of uh, TC2000. But right. just to hammer home the point of you saying yes to things that I find hilarious, you have a line here that says, if you think this is just about enough porn for one book, you should consider this last bizarre tale. And then you tell another crazy story uh, <laughs> that you probably should have said no to. <laughs> right. I probably should have said no. But if you say no, you don't have, I have so many great experiences in my life. Like really bizarre, bizarre movie-like experiences that it's like a movie. And then I think, really oh, is. yeah, then that, that helps me most likely with acting, I assume. You know, I met really bad guys. I mean, I've been in positions where I thought I'm in pop fiction. And then um, it's like, yeah, this is for real. This is how these people are, you know? Yeah, this is crazy. They're just like you think they would be, <laughs> or <It's>, not. <laughs> I, I can't wait to. Fin I'll probably finish it tonight or tomorrow. I'm uh, I'm reading some of these <laughs> stories. Like, that, <laughs> the dude's done some crazy stuff. Uh, so I asked some people um, subscribe to my Patreon for the channel about some questions mm -hmm. they wanted me to ask you. Absolutely. And, yeah. I wanted to give you some. Uh, one is, who is the legit toughest person you have worked with? Oh, that's a good question. Billy Blanks. Don Wilson. Both of them. Okay. Benny Akitas. Benny? I, I don't think I've seen a movie with him in your Oh, movie. yeah. Uh, you've seen it probably, but you didn't notice it so much. But he's been in a lot of movies. He's also a stunt and fight coordinator. He's a world champion in kickboxing. Oh, and, okay. uh he has smaller roles in films, but he's visible. And um, he trained us for Kickboxer and uh, for some other movies. And um, he's the real deal. Yeah, he's above the above all of us. And then Don Wilson, you know, believe it or not, he'll knock you out before you know it. So is Billy Blanks. I, I can't tell you how excited I am to see you and Billy Blanks and Cynthia Rothrock on set. I think my yeah, mind is Cynthia, just explode. Cynthia, she's amazing. She's my favorite. Let me tell you, Cynthia Rothrock never says no. Never. Really? You say to Cynthia, you want to dive into a cave no one has ever dared to dive it. She'll be there. Interesting. You want to jump out of that plane without a parachute? Yeah, why not? Let's start. That is Cynthia Rothrock. Is this maybe a common personality trait with some of you that when almost know. everyone else would say no, you guys say yes? I wonder if maybe. that's a common... Uh... And not not common. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, hmm. oh, uh, perhaps, yeah. Olivier Grenier. I mean, that guy, he eats stones for breakfast. That That's like beyond me. How That's the toughest dude I've ever met in my life. There are so many interesting people, right? They are for real. They are not scared of anything. Nothing. Sure. Well, I mean, yeah. he was a, a pro kickboxer, right? Yeah, but he's more than that. He's like a Marine. He's like, uh, he'll kill you. But he's the nicest guy on the planet. But if the world goes to shit and it's Mad Max time, you want him on your side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will remember that. <laughs> yeah. Call him. Right. He'll, be, he'll be having your back. All right, so go to his house if things go to shit. Okay. Yeah, and I know where he lives, by the way. <laughs> All right, so I got to go to you, and then I'll follow you to his house. Got it. Right. He lives in Vegas. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. His address is Hold on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just send me his phone number then. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you should have him on. He's so cool. 
You know, this is you're actually the first person I've interviewed. Uh, I, I had Sean on to talk a little bit about the last community. Yeah, but you should, you should, you should, man. I mean, if I can help you set this up, you should start doing it because it, it makes sense, doesn't it? It does. It does. It does. It totally makes sense. You talk about the movies. Might as well have them on board, and uh, virtually, no, we're, but that's not the right word. But uh, we're, no, when you're not there, but you're there sit next to you and talk about it you know um hmm. i think i found it in interesting when uh sean told me about it i said you know what i really would like to do that because i watched that show and i think it's really clever what you guys say and i enjoy it and i left a comment here and there and i thought yep i'll be the first to say i want to talk to you well i appreciate and that a lot um one absolutely. of the running jokes about the last kumite has been Am I going to get the shit kicked out of me on set because I've had all these actors' movies on my show? Uh, and yeah, I, I so I wasn't sure about asking some people if they would want to come on because they might be upset. Because you know, no, some people... they're not upset. Okay. okay, I don't think so because this is um, you're doing it the right way. You, you're not uh, condescending. You know what I mean? You just reacting to something that. It's normal. And every single actor, unless they're uh, delusional, they know it, what kind of movie they're in. Okay. Oh, I, yeah, mean, you I, must I try know. not to be condescending. I'm just a fat idiot in my basement watching movies, so I'm not trying to, you know, put No, you're not down. condescending. It, it's really bizarre at times. I mean, some of those films that you watch are dead, downright hilarious. You must know that you are part of something funny, or at least you know what level you're on. Sometimes it's, okay, so, I mean, we all try hard to make it the best movie we can. And sometimes unintentionally it comes off really stupid. I see yeah. that. Yeah, it's like, there is so much garbage out there and you're not in charge of it. You're just in for the ride. I mean, all these movies, I don't know when I, sh when I shot TC2000, what do I know what they should? I don't know what they shoot around the corner. I have no idea. I have no idea how they edit this together. I, I have a hunch, and some some people I look at them like, oh, I don't know. But uh, who cares, you know? And then there's in the end the end product, and you can only hope it's good. A lot of times, uh, the hunch you had really, you're like, okay, I had a hunch on this one. You sure. Know? Yeah. I just wasn't Sometimes sure because, you know, some, some yeah. actors have ego. Well, oh, I mean, everybody has an ego, but, uh, you know, just wasn't sure. And uh, egos are my least favorite things are vanity movies, you know. Oh, that, th those have become yeah. some of my favorites. These guys who make a movie about how cool they are. Those are those are something. <laughs> I mean, I've been involved in so many and uh, it's always the same. And I should know better. You know, it's like. I want to be one of you guys. I got the dough. Let's do this. And then you end up in a bad movie. Well, or you end up, yeah, because it's not, it's just, it just doesn't work. Or sometimes it works, but most of the time it doesn't work because they see themselves as something they are not, or they're copying someone. The worst is to be a copy. There's only one Van Damme, so you can't, I don't care how you do the splits, right? And a lot of people need to learn that the hard way. You, you, you must be you doing you and you can't be an action star right away just because you have the money you know uh that's a certain it factor you have to have can't buy it sure. yeah Absolutely. oh can't fake it can't smoke a cigar and think you're someone you know um i'm not saying that people that smoke cigars think they're someone but you you know what i mean you have to yeah, be your own Everybody person. was trying to be Arnold back in the day. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, back in the day, it was Stigal with the... <laughs> it was... Everyone wanted to be Stigal, Van Damme, or Arnold, or Sylvester Stallone. I don't know how many people and, want uh, to be Stigal nowadays, but uh, back then, yeah. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve Stigal. That's an impressive man, but uh, wow. And, and when I say impressive, I mean... I just met him a few times. That guy's huge. What is you he, know? six four or something like that? Yeah, yeah. He's six. He's my height, and uh, but he's huge. I mean, he's probably uh, two hundred 
80 pounds easy. Uh, he might be he might be a little bit over that nowadays. <laughs> Maybe even over. I've never seen anything like it ever. Uh, yeah. It's like, how the hell does that happen? And uh, when I saw him, he was eating ice cream. I said, oh, there we go. What a shock. <laughs> what a shock. I can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> and, did, so yeah. you met him. Did you, uh, did you get to talk to him much? Yeah, yeah. Well, that really was an unsettling uh, meeting, so to speak. I'm in the Ritz-Carlton in uh, Moscow. Best hotel in the world, in my opinion where all the big movie stars hang out. Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, you know, there's a floor on the 11th floor. I think it's 11. You have to have a key. The president goes there. It's like high society lifestyle. So I've been there so many times. I'm, I'm literally almost lived there. And um, so does Steven Seagal. And uh, he, he has the security guards from Putin. I would assume they're from Putin because these are big guys, right? Uh, they're all when he walks in, he lives in Moscow a lot of times. He, he has a passport, so he has these security detail. Big guys like me, but they look like out of a movie in terms of GI Joe Russianish, right? Russian GI Joe, and then he always sits uh, on a couch facing the entrance, so he can see who is coming in, right? Always the same seat, like a king on a throne. And then the security guys. So I walk in because I'm uh, basic. I'm shooting a movie there, one of many. And then uh, all these security guys, like, oh, there's Matthias, you know, but they all know me, obviously, because Russia is my main territory. And um, I go to Stephen because my friend knows Stephen, and he says, "You should go and say hi to Stephen. You know, he'd be so happy to hear." That you're my best friend, and my best friend is best friends with Steven Seagal. Uh, I'm like, okay, well, he was pushing me to say hi, so I go there, I say hello, and then it was so funny. Uh, he sees me walking up, and I can see he's already uh, not sure why I would, why am I walking up to him? Right, and I'm a big guy, and I'm wearing uh, boots. I remember that cowboy boots. So I'm like six seven in those boots, right? Uh, still from my work, and then. Um, he looks at my boots. He's about to get up to shake my hand, and then he looks at my boots, and he very quickly calculated that I might be taller than him, so he doesn't get up. I mean, I can read people, right? He's a, oh, he looks at my boots, he sits back down, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's going to be interesting. And then he didn't know who I was, and then I'm like, oh, that, then I was really irritated because I thought, how is that even possible? I've been doing movies for 30 years and you don't know me. Well, I guess not everybody knows me. But in Russia, everybody knows me, you know. All his people that work for him, they go crazy. Uh, when he's in the action industry. I mean, f for Christ's sake. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, I had the biggest people in the business come up to me and talk to me. And then I don't mind either, but he was, like, treating me like I'm nobody, so to speak, right? But then uh, I was like, okay, I... I guess not. No, that's how it is. And then uh, he looks at my gold watch. It's a big gold watch. And uh, that, that's all he was interested in. You know, it's like, oh, I like your watch. You know, your watch. Uh, how much did it cost? I said, I don't know. It was a present. I don't know how much my watch. It, it's, it's just a, it looked more than it is. You know, to be honest, right? Uh, I was wearing it in the, in the movie, actually. I'm playing a bad guy. And, um, it was all about my watch, and I was really kind of disappointed, you know. And uh, he was just, uh, I don't know, full of himself, but friendly full of himself, you know. I felt it uh, wasn't the best meeting. And then, uh, ironically, um, I'm in a restaurant, and then he sits behind me and is talking to some diamond guys, and he they give him, like, expensive diamonds and some diamond deal, and then... As soon as he had that diamond for his wife, a ring, you know, he gets up and leaves. You know, they pay the bill. It's just like, as soon as he, I said, ah, oh, he's that kind of guy. And then um, they, they invited him to go to a film festival, and he asked for so much money. And they said, oh, no, we can't afford it. But then they took me. <laughs> I remember that. They paid me a, a certain amount, not, not 100000 plus a private jet, you know. I got like 10% of that, but uh, for just a day to fly down to this film festival, you know, and I thought, well, at least one good thing came out of it. <laughs> yeah. 
I am utterly shocked to hear that meeting Steven Seagal was disappointing. <laughs> kind of. Uh, I, I couldn't help but kind of like him, too, because it's it's kind of weird. If you meet a man, he's an actual movie star, right? Or at least he used to be. And uh, he's very self-assured. And uh, it's kind of interesting to be around someone like that who is so self-assured, there's nothing that would deter them of feeling good about themselves. Nothing. I mean, that might be the I nicest haven't. description I've ever heard someone say about yeah. Steven Seagal. That was good. And that's really what it is. He doesn't know. He doesn't care. He feels good about himself. And that's something to be said about someone uh, where most people, I mean, A-level people are so insecure. Mm. Interesting. I know them. I'm around it. I know them all. I've been around every single A-lister, very close. And uh, I'm like, oh, I, I can see where, I know where the little things are there. I know stories too, you know. I live in Hollywood. So it's amazing to meet someone who has absolutely zero insecurities and should have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> You're not lying. You oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if he hears it. Uh, you know, that's, uh, you got to admire that. So That's funny. You know, I say I'm not condescending. I am very condescending to Steven Seagal. That is the one guy. Yeah, that, but uh, everybody is. There's the entire YouTube community making fun of it. I'm watching it because I heard stories that are so outraged and they're true. That's wild. They're that's true. So wild. It's, it's almost like how the hell nothing ever happened to this guy. It's pretty amazing that he's as successful as he is, but maybe yeah, it's, but it's pretty it's amazing. He never got, you know, what's pretty amazing? He never got beat up. That is true. That is very. I true. mean, if you, oh man, the guys I work with, you rub them the wrong way, they have the means to to hurt you. Yeah, but well, nobody that, ever... that story about um, uh, Gene Labelle. That uh, yeah. may or may not be true, but that's about all I've ever heard about him. I, let me tell you, I've been in that position with Gene Labelle. I, really? I, I wrestled with Gene Labelle, and he did it just like he did it with Steven Seagal. He put me in the same position, and he let me live. And he said, the only reason I let you out of this is because I like you. <laughs> well, and there was good. nothing, nothing I could do. Let me tell you, I'm... That was at my peak, and that was really strong. And I know judo and all this. There was nothing I could do against this guy. That's interesting. And someone yeah. of your size, I mean, that. how many times has that actually happened to you? For the first time. Wow. That's pretty and, interesting. And he said, the only reason I didn't make you poop in your pants is because I like you. I was like, thank you. <laughs> he offered me 10 grand if I can beat him. So That's so funny. You know, yeah. you mentioned uh, Seagal not wanting to stand up because he, he you were taller than him. That is a weird thing when you're a tall guy. When you meet someone else who's taller, you're like, I don't like this. I'm used to being a tall guy. Hey, I have a story that's just so pointless. I'm at Gold's Gym, right? And I'm like a, a furniture of Gold's Gym. So every year, someone walks in, wants to beat me, so to speak, because I'm the dark angel, right? It started with Andrew Bernowski. I don't know if you know him. Ah. Uh... Uh, he was big for a while. He did Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, oh, okay. Those football yeah. movies. Uh, so many movies. Big guy came up to me, you know. I've seen you in all the movies. Now I'm going to do this and this. And he did, right? So it always was someone tipping me on the shoulder. And I'm turning around. Oh, fuck. That's another guy. So big and everything. And one time, I, I never forget this. This guy aims up for me. And he was the best looking guy I've ever seen in my life. Literally. He was making Dolph look like uh, not not Dolphish enough. I mean, he was six foot seven, built like as impossible, face like a god, blonde hair, the whole thing. He was in Triple X in the first Triple X movie. Okay. Uh, if you ever watch it, you'll see this blonde godlike guy, right? And he came in a time where Bigger Better Deal was still out there, and uh, he comes like this, taps, me, and I see him through the mirrors. I knew he would come, and I instantly. Did the math. Oh, this guy's fuck. Oh, he's bigger and taller and better looking. And then um, that was at my peak too. And he's like, "Hey, how you doing? 
I'm like, good. My name is uh, Peter Sonso. I'm from Czechoslovakia. Uh, how tall are you? I said, six five. Six. I'm six seven. He turns around, walks away. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> like his entire life, he wanted to see if he's bigger, right? And he is, and uh, better looking. And then I mentioned this to my manager, and he said, "Yeah, I just signed him up." <laughs> That's like, funny. Oh my god! It is a uh, thing with tall guys, though. When you see someone taller, you're kind of like, "I don't like this." It's like it's literally like that. Uh, I, I can't explain it. It's so stupid. Um, well, I, I have it too. I'm six three, so I'm going to try not to stand oh, so next you know to you one set. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So when you I know see it, one set, that... I'm going to try to be at least twenty feet away I... so that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's bothered some for some reason because you're so used to tower over by everybody. I lost a job. I lost the James Bond villain because of that. It's in what? the book. So. Oh, I yeah. didn't get to that. Oh well. I tell you real quick, so you don't have to bother with it. Uh, for your audience, I get a call from Jane Jenkins, one of the biggest casting directors in Hollywood. Right? She said uh, the director, uh, James Putzwood, is coming in from England on a plane just to meet you. When can you be? Uh, when are you available? And I'm like, that's bizarre. That's the guy who's doing James Bond, right? And she says, yeah, he wants to meet you. I'm like. For the bill, yeah, for the bill. You know how big that is, right? Yeah. So I go, huge. I go. To, it's huge. I go to the office, and she puts me in a room, and there's a light bulb. It's like, what am I, a, a criminal? And there's a cop coming in, and it's like, are you guilty? And that's how I felt. And then um, there's another chair, and then the door opens up, and I'm about to get up, and I do what I always do. I stand up with my muscles, the whole thing, my muscles, you know, and uh, so confident. I'm not talking about now, I'm talking about when I was peaking, right? And um, the guy is six, seven. He walks in there and I'm looking up to him and I'm used to be the bad guy intimidating others. And he was not a friendly man. He was stoic, uh, off-putting, um, maybe on purpose. And I was so shocked. I couldn't find my stride and he's like, sit down, I want to talk to you. And I wasn't myself because he intimidated me like like animals would intimidate each other right off the beginning. And yeah. one is stronger than the other. And he's a big director. So I didn't get the job. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. After him flying in just to meet me, he, he I reacted instinctively the wrong way, like you say, right? I was put off by him towering over me it's unusual usually directors like i read for ron howard um in his office you know, you know i come in there as the guy he expects me to be right this uh yeah. they call you in for a reason right because they want this big guy whatever so you feel validated <laughs> wow I, mm. imagine that you as the bond villain that been uh, i wanted to yeah it would have been great um but it didn't happen oh, so many things i tell you yeah i mean that's the nature of your business right is oh i say i don't even think about it yeah it, sure. it just happens all the time it's part of the business yeah you get so close you know so uh, i don't want to keep you too much longer here i want to rapid fire a couple of these questions because i think some of them are pretty good uh okay in what movie did you suffer the worst injury a fist fighter a fist, fist fighter, fighter. Seen that. fist fighter yeah a good movie. That's actually a good movie. It's um, a Spanish, no, it's an American movie shot in Mexico uh, with a Spanish movie star, Jorge Riviero. And um, wonderful story, very simply shot. Anyway, the guy that uh, choreographed the fight scenes, he did the Raging Bull fight scenes, he did the first Rocky movies, he was the real deal. We went in a training camp for all this. Long story short, uh, I got knocked out for real. Oh, yeah, I did read that in your book. Yeah, you just yeah. KO'd you. KO'd me. I was like, wow. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I really heard a bit. Uh, I think that's it. Well, that's pretty significant, getting knocked unconscious. Jesus. Yeah, in real life, uh, it's one thing you do it in the movies. Once you get knocked out, you just, I mean, you get knocked out and get back up. <laughs> but, it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit painful. Yeah. <sighs> 
Okay. That's, I'm going to have to check out that movie. I, have, I haven't seen that one yet. It's not a bad movie. Uh, I'm telling you, it's uh, that's one of those old-time movies that put a lot of heart and effort into it. Well, on the heels of that, someone asked, which of your movies do you feel hasn't received the attention it deserves? Uh, maybe... Uh, yeah, there's there's a couple of good movies and the rest is just so so, you know. I mean, the not one so you just so. described sounds like one of them. Yeah, that for instance, Fist Fighter. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're either really good or not so good. You know, it's nothing I can do about it. Uh, like like I said, Age of Treason was pretty good. That was the most expensive pilot ever shot in that year for Columbia Pictures, and we didn't get picked up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't seen that either. Hmm. Yeah, uh, by now outdated, <laughs> you know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, which co-star have you been in the most movies with? Cynthia, maybe. Really? I, I, I think Wait, I've only seen uh, the two of you in No Retreat, No Surrender 2 so far. Oh, we meet each other all the time, I guess. That's more like at conventions and stuff. Um, well, no, not that many, no. Billy Blanks, uh, maybe? Jalal? Oh, uh, uh, Jal yeah, Billy Blanks and Jalal. Okay. And, uh, yeah, those two, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen uh, the three of you in two movies so far, and it's been gold, so I'm looking forward to uh, checking out more of those. And yeah. uh, let's see, I'll hit you with one more here. Which martial art would you recommend for aging guys uh, that will aging end up not killing them? Oh, not Taekwondo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kickboxing. Sure. Kickboxing, okay. Boxing and kickboxing. You can do it without getting injured. Okay. Keeps, keeps you fit, yeah. All right, kickboxing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go to a local kickboxing gym, just like uh, they have uh, the UFC gyms. They really have great programs. They won't kill you there for the public, you know what I mean? Uh, very good for condition and fun, meeting great people in these places. You said you did judo uh, for a while. Do you yeah. still do no. that? No, I know. I mean, the basics you will never forget. You know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh... That's like a beginner thing, kind of. It's usually like judo, taekwondo, you know, and then you branch out. I've done a little bit of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and I always end up getting hurt. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's that's kicked the shit out of me. That I would not recommend for older people. Yeah, it, uh, I, I was yeah. doing it when I was 30, and I was I left just yeah. injured constantly. Constant. That's what people tell me. It's one of the most fun things to learn, but boy, your neck, your shoulders. Whew. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Well, this has been great, man. I don't want to keep you anymore. It's, uh, I really appreciate it's you coming great. on. Yeah. And uh, we barely uh, talked about the last Kumite, but I should mention that the Patreon... No, let's talk about it a little bit, because... Uh, that that's interesting. Ask me anything about it. Uh, so, uh, what 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 should we say about it? First of all, um, Kickstarter. Yes, we got about two weeks left on the Kickstarter. We got two weeks left on the Kickstarter. Um, it's kind of bizarre because it was a bit of bad timing, if you ask me, because Cynthia had the Kickstarter as well. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and hers and gangbusters, yeah. Oh my God, and I'm sure. I mean, Cynthia didn't know, neither did Sean know. It's just bad timing. If Cynthia would have not had it at the same time ish, yeah. we would have gangbusted too. Yeah. Yeah. I was de not devastated because I love Cynthia and I want her to be very successful. And obviously she is. But I was like, oh my God, this is, this is almost bad timing, you know, because so many people have invested into Cynthia's movie. But I'm amazed how many people invested. I have already invested in last committee. Yeah, I think we're up to about a hundred thousand right now, and yes. the last yes. week or two is usually when money pours in. So right. So I have high hopes, and I think it's worthwhile. Literally, uh, we're not asking for much money. This is pocket change, and it will be, it will be the best we can do. I mean, this is a project of love. None of us gets paid money. I mean, a little bit only. It's just covering cost really uh and all the stars said yes to it i said to uh sean i said if you motivate all these names the right way they'll do it just to, just to be 
in that group to recreate this one more time. It's a project of love. It's not a project of money. It, no, it really isn't. I, I'm not getting no. paid at all. I, he asked me See? how much I wanted. And I was like, no, I just want to just want to help you get this movie made because it's such a great idea. Yeah, and everybody is part of it. It's like the, the, I have a feeling he said to me in our last conversation, I have so much more news. I haven't even shared it with you. Apparently, it's getting bigger and better and more people and more excitement. Uh, I love it. I mean, it's I'm mean, really curious. You know, I want to you know, I want to start. Yeah. Well, and you've been very gracious with the Kickstarter. I mean, you're a part of how many tiers where people can get autographs from you or sure, uh, sure. Uh, personalized. Is it a note or is it a video? I don't remember. Um, I, I don't remember, but whatever it is, I'll do it because they deserve it, you know. And um, let's make this happen. It's, it's, it's one of those things. It's a labor of love, just like Bloodsport was a labor of love that got a second chance because it was already on the shelves, you know. Absolutely. And, and that, I, I always yeah. say that uh, I feel like, because well, I watch movies like this all the time and your movies, mm -hmm. I miss these kinds of movies being made. Just Me too. Me no too. CG, just a fun yeah. action movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just miss it. I feel like there's Me a big too. void. Yeah, blood, sweat, and tears. And did we talk about Mike Meyer? M Mike Myers. <laughs> Mike Miller yet? No, we didn't. Go ahead. Oh, okay, so we have a wonderful fight coordinator that already put all the fights together with stunt people. They film it ahead of time. And this is how you do good movies. You don't just arrive on the set or three days before and say, this is what we're going to do and try to memorize it. You already have it all filmed, panned out, done by stuntmen. And then you show it to the actors and the actors get to do it and you film it beforehand by the time you get to the set you're very familiar with the routine and that routine is already planned out meticulously <clears throat> so this is not winging it this is how it's done in in a movies like uh, james bond taken all these films these actors have a certain amount of time to study the fight scenes that are highly highly complicated and well prepared they film it, and by the time you film it, you've done it maybe 50, 100 times, watched yourself doing it. That's how they do John Wick. Uh, that's how it has to be done, and that's what we are doing. That's what Mike Miller is doing. So, And everybody in this movie is very professional, fighter. I mean, excellent people. It's the kind yeah. of work being done on this that is not typically done on a movie of this size. No would not be done it'd be like oh okay listen we got three hours uh maybe three and a half see what you can do <laughs> matthias take your shirt off do some kicks right yeah <laughs> yeah kind of like that that's literally what it is and uh no i'm so happy this is gonna be great i'm i'm really pumped man i'm looking forward to seeing you in six weeks i think we're gonna have a blast working on yeah me off. too I'm so you, you're actually in a plane suck, coming I'm, over i'm here. there i'm there the whole month I love it. This is great. I mean, we'll have some fun. Yeah. So you if know? you need coffee, let me know. I'll probably be the one getting it. <laughs> <laughs> and bring your camera. Uh, oh, I will. I definitely will. I mean, I, all you need it. All you need these days is a phone. You know. So. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll definitely bring some gear. Hey, hang on uh, while we say our goodbyes. I'll, okay. I'll talk to you afterwards. But uh, I appreciate you and everybody. Check out the last Kumite. We're in the final stretch, and. We are, I'm just pumped, man. It's going to be so good. I'm pumped too. And I promise you, you're not going to waste your dollars. You're not doing it. You are totally part agree. of a community that we need to stick together. Yeah, absolutely. And even yeah. if it goes sideways, I'll watch the movie on my channel. We'll have fun with it that yeah. way. <laughs> it's a win -win. Uh, where are you located again? Where are you located again? I'm in Maryland. Oh, Maryland, it's Outside too bad. Baltimore. Yeah. I'd love to come. If, I, if I'm if i ever in the area, please have me as a guest. Uh, oh, dude, that would be a blast. We'd have a good time I, for sure. I have a beer with you and uh, we, rip, we rip this movie. <laughs> Sold. I will hold you to that.